But on that day, we see that it was higher at the end of the first half than it was at the end of the second half. But we all know that that lag game is very dependent on the activity that has been occurred in the minutes immediately preceding the, uh, the sampling. So this is not very meaningful. But when we look at the mass of temperature, you see the rest values were 36.5. Pretty much, that is after the warm up, values went up to 38.3. After the first half, the mean values were above 40 degrees, and we had a couple of players with, uh, with uh, intramuscular values of 42 degrees, which is very, very significant. Those values were lower at the end of the match. Repeated jump performance, again, another index of fatigue over the match. As you can see, there is a significant increment in the average jump height in uh, 15 seconds uh, of repeated of the movement jumps and repeated sprint performance we see exactly the same thing a significant decrement in the mean running speed in three 30 minute sprints and this is an important finding again when we look at the relationship between the yo-yo intermittent recovery test result of these players and fatigue resistance we see that there is a relationship. So those players who have a higher yo-yo intermittent recovery test performance are the players who cover more high intensity running distance in the last 15 minute interval of the match. So when everybody is dying off, those players who have very good yo-yo test scores are the players who can make a difference uh, when everyone else is so in conclusion for, for that study, all four systems were able to detect performance decrements during a football game and can be applied to study the development of fatigue in a football. But large between system differences uh, were revealed in the determination of the absolute distance cover, which implies that comparison to the systems should be done with caution. Pronounced gain induced fatigue occurs in the final stage of a high level male soccer game played in that environment. And the ability to repeat intense exercise was highly compromised. And soccer specific training status and the degree of dehydration play a role in this type of fatigue. Uh, another study that we did was to assess the effects of uh, sprint and power training programs, in-season sprint and power, power training programs in elite junior soccer players. Basically, what we wanted to, to do is, because we were so, so successful in improving their aerobic uh, fitness, we wanted to know whether we could be as successful in improving their speed and power. So we compared two uh, short-term interventions. One of them was based on Contrast training, as you can see, the description of the training content is, is much more uh, complicated. And spring training. Every spring in this training program was measured with uh, photocell gates. So it's just a progression of two times, four by 30 meters, blah, 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 twice, two sets, two sets, three sets, three sets, four sets, four sets. Four sets. So an, an increment of the number of repetitions over time. What we saw was that uh, when we measured the, uh, the spring over 50 meters, the, uh, the group that was involved in the contrast training had a significant gain, whereas the group that was involved in pure linear spring training did not improve. Nor not in the uh, 50 meter sprint test, nor in the 50 meter agility test. So, if agility is considered to be important, if spring distance, if spring time is considered to be important, and I think it is in football, contrast training resulted in a more uh, effective result than a pure sprint training. Finally, uh, another study that we did was uh, trying to determine the uh, age-related differences in repeated sprint ability in these highly trained football uh, players. We know
know that uh, there is a lot of emphasis uh, everywhere on determining the repeated splitability, but the evolution of this viral has not been uh, described. So what we did was take all of our academic groups and perform the same test, exactly the same conditions, uh, in, in an identical manner. What you see here is the uh, mean time uh, or the uh, mean spring time for each one of the age groups. And as you can see, there is a significant difference in the time all the way to the under 15 group, and then there is an stabilization of that uh, performance. So, probably this gaming performance is mostly related to growth, whereas the gaming performance here is mostly related to training. And when we look at the peak lactate concentration, we measure lactate at 1 minute, 3 minutes, 1 minute, 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 7 minutes, and 10 minutes to determine peak lactate concentrations, we see a linear increase with time. However, when we divide the peak blood lactate concentration by body mass, what we see is that there is no significant difference among the groups. Here you see the relationship between mean spring time and first spring time and peak blood lactate. So basically, if a player is able to produce a lot of lactate, it is going to go very fast. Or the other way around. If a player goes very fast, it is going to produce a lot of lactate. And that applies to uh, total time, uh, to mean spring time, and also to the first spring time. The conclusion from this study was that uh, differences in spring time were strongly correlated with differences in body mass and height between the age groups. So growth had a huge impact on RSA. Despite the previous suggestion that children recover more quickly from intense exercise than adults, we report for the first time that there were no significant difference in percent spring increment among age groups. So we read in our physiology books that children recover very quickly, that they don't have the ability to produce a lot of lactate because the, uh, their uh, enzymatic system is not prepared. Apparently, that is not true when you are dealing with highly trained youth football players. Post-test peak blood lactate concentration tended to be progressively greater from one age group to the next, but remained constant when adjusted for body mass. So the ability of children muscle to produce lactate is as good as that of young adults. This is a summary of the physiological and performance gains elicited by intense exercise. If we focus on this side, in sport, during normal training and during tapering for most important competitions, we can see that high intensity training is going to help us improve VO2 max, peak aerobic velocity, lactic threshold, running economy, sprint performance, intermediate performance, repeated sprint ability. And during the taper, it has been seen that this type of training can improve muscle strength and power, vertical jump anabolic markers, reduce muscle damage, sprint performance, repeat the sprint ability, and shallow run performance. So high intensity training is very, very important for a sport like football of any color. This comes from a consensus statement that, that was organized by James Bansborn and group in uh, Copenhagen regarding uh, intense training. And these are the consensus statements, some of the consensus statements uh, from that conference. I'm about to read. There is a strong evidence indicating that high intensity training is associated with maximum physiological and performance adaptation during periods of intense training and highly trained individuals to athletes. There is also strong evidence indicating that training intensity is key to maintain and enhance physiological and performance adaptations during the taper, and therefore, the training load should not be reduced at the expense of intensity when we are approaching the main condition. Intense exercise is a critical component of team sport performance, and there is a strong evidence to suggest that the optimization of the player's ability to perform this type of effort should be a priority. And the 
last one, limited available research suggests that teams sport athletes could benefit from a high intensity tapering program to optimally prepare for the regular season and dominant style competition. Before I finish, I would like to acknowledge the contribution to uh, football related uh, research of the pioneers that are no longer with us, like Tom Riley, Bob 